All right, now we're going to take a look at our series and parallel calculations. Series and parallel calculations. So we're going to try and figure out what our total resistance is based on our various different circuit types. So there's two basic types of circuits. One of them is called a series circuit. That's where we have our resistors wired back to back to back. That's called a series type circuit. The other is where we have our resistors wired like a ladder, and that is known as a parallel circuit. So two different types of circuits, series and parallel. Back to back to back, that's going to be a series type circuit. And wired uh, like a ladder, that'll be a parallel type circuit. So a series circuit is fairly easy. It's basically just taking our various different resistors that we have here and adding them together. So here I've got 10 ohms, 10 ohms, and 10 ohms. That's going to be a total resistance of 30 ohms. So our total resistance when we're dealing with a series circuit is additive. Our total resistance, that's RT here, equals the resistor 1 plus resistor 2 plus resistor 3. So here I have 10 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 10 ohms, a total of 30 ohms. That's pretty straightforward. When we get into a parallel circuit, there's three basic methods for calculating our total resistance for a parallel circuit. The first is the equal resistance method. The second is a product over sum. And the third is a reciprocal method. Okay, we're going to take a look at all three of those. And based on the type of circuit that we have, uh, we'll be able to figure out which one's going to be the best method for solving for our total resistance on a parallel circuit. So again, remember, parallel circuits have those resistors wired in uh, like a ladder. So the equal resistance method only works if I have three equal resistors. So in this circumstance, I have 10 ohms, 10 ohms, and 10 ohms. So the equal resistance method, a lot of people take a look at that, and I ask them what the total resistance is, and they'll say 10 ohms. Uh, that's not true. The total resistance is going to be 3.33. Now, how did I come up with that? Using the equal resistance method, we're going to take the resistance of a single resistor and divide it by our number of resistors. So in this case, I have 10 divided by 3. So my single resistor, 10 ohms, and divided by my number of resistors, that's going to be 3. 10 divided by 3, my total resistance is 3.33. Again, equal resistance method only works when we have equal resistance all the way across. If we have different, re different resistance, then we're going to have, have to use one of two different methods. One of them is called the product over sum method. The product over sum method is used to calculate the resistance of only two resistance resistors at a time. So we can only take a look at two resistors at a time. So um, our total resistance is calculated by taking our product of our resistors, multiplying them, over the sum, which is adding them. So in this circumstance, I've got three resistors, but again, I can only deal with two resistors at a time. So let's take a look at these two. So I've got two resistors here. One of them is at 16 ohms. The second is at 13 ohms. So I take 16 times 13. 16 times 13, if I plug that into my calculator, that ends up being 208 at the top over 16 plus 13, 29. So I take 208 on my calculator, divided by 29, and that gives me 7.17, or we rounded it up to 7.2 ohms. So that's our total resistance for these two resistors. Now what about the third one? Well, when we take a look at our third one, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our 7.2, our total calculated ohms that we had for those first two resistors, and then take a look at the second resistor at its full 36. So here I'm going to do the product over sum again. So I take 7.2 times 36. That's 259.2. And then we're going to divide this by 43.2. So 259.2 divided by 43.2 is going to give me 6 ohms. So again, we looked at two resistors at a time. My 16 and my 13 came up with a total resistance of 7.2 ohms, doing the product over the sum. And then we took a look at our 7.2 ohms in comparison to our 36 ohms. And we we're able to calculate using our product over sum method a total of 6 ohms. All right, so the reciprocal method is a formula that can be used for as many resistances as the parallel circuit contains. 
So our formula is normally 1 over the, our total resistance equals 1 over the resistance of 1 plus 1 over the resistance of 2 plus 1 over the resistance of 3. And if I had 4 resistors, it would be plus 1 over the resistance of 4. So it can just go on and on. All right. So we're going to take a look at this. Uh, but this involves using fractions, right? So here we can use the reciprocal method when we have differing uh, resistances across the, uh, the circuit. So here I have 10, 20, and 30. So we're going to take and plug those into the formula. Again, 1 over the total resistance equals 1 over the resistance of 1 plus 1 over the resistance of 2 plus 1 over the resistance of 3. So we plug in the numbers. This is my first resistor. That becomes 10. This is my second resistor. And that becomes 20. And that one becomes 30. But we get a problem here mathematically. Mathematically, we cannot add these three numbers together because they don't have what's called a common denominator. The denominator, that's the number down at the bottom. So we need to have a common denominator. So here we need something that will go into 10, 20, and 30. Well, 60 will go into all those, right? So if I'm going to take and turn this into 60, I've got to do this times 6, right? But if I'm going to do something on the bottom, I need to do that at the top as well. So this becomes 6 over 60. So at the bottom here, I need to do that times 3, right, to make it 60. So the top is going to be times 3 as well, so that's 3 over 60. Here, the bottom is at 30, and the top is at 1. So if I do 30, I do 30 times 2, that's going to be 60. Then I'm going to have to do this times 2 as well. That gives me 2 over 60. So now I have 6 over 60 plus 3 over 60 plus 2 over 60, that's going to give me a total of 11 over 60. Now normally, mathematically, what you're supposed to do is cross multiply. But I'm going to teach you a little shortcut here. We're just going to take this whole equation and flip it upside down. So we flip our equation, and that becomes RT over 1, which is the same as our total resistance. We can just get rid of this, actually. Equals 60 divided by 11. So 60 divided by 11 equals 5.45. So we took our resistors, we plugged them into our formula, we came up with a common denominator, and then we took our resulting equation and we flipped it upside down to come up with a total resistance here of 5.45 ohms. Now another thing that we can do here is we can take a look and uh, solve for our voltage that we have in here if we've got a couple of different pieces of information here. So here I've got a question that says, hey, we've got a total amperage on this uh, circuit of 3 amps. And I have two resistors that are 20 and 50 ohms apiece. Well, this is what type of circuit? That's right, it's a series circuit, right? So in a series circuit, these numbers are just additive, right? So if I know that this is 20 and this is 50, then my total resistance on this circuit is going to be 70 ohms. And then I also have 3 amps. If you remember from general electrical theory, we've got a couple of different formula wheels that we can do. This is the Ohm's Law, Ohm's Law circle. So that says E equals I times R, right? So if I want to solve for the voltage, I just take my current times my resistance. Well, we know those two things, right? I've got a current of 3 amps. I've got resistance of 70 amps. So we can just go ahead and plug this into the formula here. So I've got my current and my resistance, so my current is 3 amps, my resistance is 70 ohms, so 3 times 70, that's going to be 210 volts. So we can figure out our voltage there. Well, what if they asked us for power? We could do that as well. We go ahead and grab the pi circle. The pi circle is power equals current times voltage, right? So I know my current, that's going to be 3 ohms, right? And I know my resistance, that's going to be 70 ohms, but uh, that doesn't come into play here. There's no resistance here. But I do know what my voltage was. That was 210, right? So I take 3 times 210, that's going to give me, what, 630 watts. So I can figure out what the power is going to be as well. Again, these uh, calculations are pretty straightforward. If you have any problems with this, back up the videos and then uh, march through them, and then try some various different ones yourself. If you still have problems with this, feel free to give me a call. My name is Bob Delahunt. I'm the electrical instructor here at Construction Seminars. You can reach me at 505-883-3885.
Thanks.